Oh, hey guys, welcome to That's a Good Fish. We're out here at Table Rock Lake. Uh, I'm here with Grant Rinkin. He's a tournament angler in the uh, Joplin, Missouri area. Fishes Grand Lake a lot. Grant, you want to say hi to the camera? Hey guys. Grant, where are, you fish, where, are you, where are you mainly fishing? You fishing Grand? You also uh, fishing what Grand. circuit are you fishing? Uh, the Ram Open Series. Um, I fish some BFLs too. Uh, a bunch of local terms at Grand. He knows what he's doing and we're out here uh, Table Rock today. We put it in at the Shell Knob Access and uh, it's July, it's a hot, it's gonna be a hot summer day. We may have to jump in later today, but we're gonna show you a few techniques on um, how to catch some fish a few different ways today. We had a big rain a couple days ago, so uh, water looks great. You know, it's only like 15, 20 foot visibility out here today, so uh, it's, pretty dirty. it's real dirty out here. But stick around, we're gonna catch some fish today and uh, it's gonna be a good show. Out here sometimes on lakes like this, uh, especially this clear and loaded with shad. Uh, the fish will come out in about, we're sitting in 33 foot of water, out suspended out of, off these boat docks, following the shad. And there's a big pot of shad out here and we just had a few uh, bass probably chasing them. So uh, we're trying to catch up, catch those right now. Uh, this is gonna be, be a pattern we might do throughout the day, just kind of find a school, see them busting, throw a spoon or something on it, and maybe hook a few. Go get him, go get him, he's wolf packing. Don't make me put the freaking head on already, the Ned Minnow. Got it! He's got it! That's a good boy. Cameraman's on, on point today, okay? Top water whopper plopper just came straight at the camera. Smallmouth, nice smallmouth. Well, we're out here. We're just idling around looking for shad. And actually, the fish will help you find the shad. Here's a little smallie. He was actually busting the tur surface. He was sitting in about probably 55 foot of water and what they'll do, these shad will come up here and they'll be stuck at the surface. You can get a top water like a, say a gunfish here, ghost color, clear water, really good. Has the red on there. Island around this whole flat, I mean it drops off to about, about 10 foot, drops 20, then come, goes way down to 50 and these shad will actually pull down to the bottom and they'll push up to the surface and these fish will I'd just pin them to the surface and just feed all day on them. In the summertime when the water gets hot, it's really important that you use your graph and your electronics effectively. And, and right now we're following some schools of bass that are feeding on giant schools of shad, as Grant was talking about earlier. As you see in the graph, these lateral lines mixed beneath these big old pods of bait are just pushing these shad up to the surface and feeding on them all at once as a big giant school. And this, this happens throughout the day and, and you can really find a, a big pot of fish whereas you might have just been driving the boat over this spot and then without electronics you wouldn't even have known these fish were here. So in the summertime, it's important that if you have the ability to use these electronics, Use them effectively and you will up your numbers of fish big time.
hot. White gas? Spot. Yeah, I got him. I think it's a good one. Look at this good one. There's a good fish here, folks. A little better fish. We're on this bridge pier here. Got some schooling Kentucky bass. Not huge, but they fight hard. Light line. Summertime, it's hot. A lot of people are staying inside in the air conditioning. You can come out here and catch some fish just like this. It's a blast. They start schooling. I don't know if we got that on camera, but there was a lot of fish schooling up and just chasing shad. Well, we switched up here to a bluff wall. These fish haven't moved out too deep to start schooling. Um, the fish aren't really biting. You can really go to town on a Ned rig here in Missouri and Table Rock, this clear water, I mean, it's what, 10 foot clarity? Oh yeah. And a little itty bitty worm and a Ned rig, just like this. Five, six, five sixteen times. Mushroom head. Where's the A? Green pumpkin orange. Zoom, finesse TRD. What does TRD stand for? I think it's turd. Uh, it stands for the real deal. Because the Ned right rig there. is the real deal. All right here. On this bluff wall, they, sh they sh set up on these shelves. You want to throw it on a six pound test line, spinning, re spinning gear, medium action rod, fast tip. And I'm just, I'm just going to this out. So what he's going to do is he's going to, he's going to slinky it right down the hit this bluff wall. And uh, I don't know if you guys know about, you know, that old slinky toy. But you know that's a term that a lot of fishermen use these days when fishing bluff walls. You just slinky it and just make it fall down those bluff shelves, and usually they'll hit it this time of year on the third or fourth slink. Sometimes the thing about fishing is you have to be able to adapt to the uh, fish and what they're doing on that day. And today they weren't schooling really well, so we decided to move up to a, uh, a river close by and start fishing a little bit shallower with a few different techniques and, and ways you can catch fish. Hey guys, we uh, earlier in the show, you know, we were out fishing main lake stuff, schoolers in about 40 foot of water. Um, the bite kind of slowed down. They weren't really out there yet because the sun is not, it's not even 12 o'clock yet. So we ran up this river right here. We're up here fishing some bluff walls still, but uh, the depth here is a lot different. We're fishing 12 to 14 foot, mostly eight to 10. Um, and we're flipping jigs and a Ned rig and we're getting quite a few bites. out halfway across the country. I know. You hate it. I think you hate it, you know. What I do when the when they're short striking or not really getting it, say eating a trailer or something, I get this bang, it's a crawfish formula. Throw it, put it spray it on your jig and they absolutely choke it. it. Smells just like crawled ad and when you're out in the lake and you're like wondering why you're not getting bit. Put on that crawfish for me, it actually really helped you. Good little fish off the more eagle jig. Just flipping it up on the up on the bluff walls. Little finesse jig, half ounce, zoom, ultra wide speed crawl. Gets the job done every time. Oh, it's a perch. We're multi-species fishing out here today. Look at that. Oh, is that a oh it's a goggle eye. It's a goggle eye. Look at the goggle eye. Okay? Eat the bank. You run up these rivers, those are actually really good to eat. Come up here, catch you some nice self of stringer or goggle eye. Uh, didn't plan to catch one of those, but boy, is that a nice treat, isn't Pretty. it? Man, what a what a fish. 
Hey guys, how you doing? It's that time of the day. Time for our viewer question of the week. This one comes from Shane in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Shane's question is, I noticed earlier in the episode you guys were talking about how to get the school going. We're gonna try and get the school going. What are some ways that you could really get a school going and how do you do it? Well, Shane, that's a great question. First off, I, I really appreciate you calling or texting, whatever, however we got your question. Uh, the text line is still open, by the way, guys. Um, one way you can really get a school going is throwing a spook and working it back very quickly uh, through the balls of shad or whatever. Maybe bringing a spoon through, um, letting it go deep. Or another way that Grant and I have really figured out how to really get them going is to really make a lot of commotion on the water and act almost like you're hurt on top of the water, something like this. Make sure. <coughs> now make sure, make sure you don't suck in a bunch of water while you're doing it. But that's a. You know what my favorite one is? What? The great white. You know. Uh, Grant's gonna demonstrate the great white. Breach. <laughs> you know, kind of predatory. Almost like you're breaching on a <laughs> seal. A baby seal. Off the coast of South Africa. <laughs> now, Grant and I have figured this out over years and years of trying to figure out how to work schooling fish effectively. Yep. Shane, I hope you can take some of these tips back to Minneapolis, Minnesota and catch you some fish. Stick around. That's a good fish. You know me, I'm a guy. I'm a jig guy. Is it a goggle? Yes. No, sir. Oh, multi species fishing out here today. Green sunfish. You know? Goggle eye, green sunfish, largemouth. Wow. I mean. Caught, caught a smallmouth today? Caught a smallmouth, yeah. I mean, can you guys believe this? I mean, if you can catch fish like this, what are you doing sitting at home? I mean, look at this thing. We need to catch like a four pounder. <laughs> Oh, yeah! Look at that! Did you see that? He came out of there and he's just like... <laughs> like each... You bait came out and he was just... Just... It's kind of like a swim jig. I stopped it and he said... And he... Yeah. 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 It's not weird. Look out, man! All the way down his throat, folks. A spot, AKA a Kentucky bass. You can tell by the uh, coloration on the side there, they got a lot more spots on the side of them. Hence the name spot. Healthy fish, very hard fighting, and always a blast to catch. Stick around. Hi. Why'd you do that? Fly fishing now. Yeah. Are you freaking kidding me? Just jaw jacking them on this dock, folks. Oh, they won't be on docks. I never said that. Rookie. Rookie. However, he did tell me to throw a spoon. It's the bang. That's what it is. See? This There's a little better fish, folks. See what he 
Yeah. I mean, what's that? Three on the stock? I mean, and I'm throwing a spinner. <laughs> oh, look at that. You know, sometimes, guys, when the fishing gets tough, sometimes you just gotta go in, cool off, find the thermocline, okay? Just like this. <laughs> thermocline is about 15 foot down. Yeah. And then you just doggy paddle back and grab onto the boat. And do some chin ups. <sighs> One thing when you're jigging a spoon is it's important that you have a method to your madness. And if you're watching, Grant and I are really jigging this spoon violently. And one way that we get it to do that is we think of something that kind of made us mad or angry. And you know, it could be maybe your wife didn't let you go fishing the day before. I don't know. Maybe your girlfriend said, hey, you can't take the boat out without me and my dog coming with you. You know, stuff like that um, really, really gets you in the mode to really jig that spoon the way it needs to be uh, worked. <laughs> take a picture. Turn it off and take a picture. It's a wall. It's a wall I do. Dude, where, where's your net? Hey folks, we got something that is a tasty treat and also a mythical creature that you don't see very often. It is the native walleye. Oh, my dick rocks! There you go, folks. Wow! What a net job, too, right? That is a walleye. We actually caught one. I've never heard of one. No. Never seen one ever in my life. And that's not a small walleye either. That is a beautiful walleye. I mean, that's definitely a keeper. If you zoom in right here and take a look at the teeth, look at that. Something that can really do some, <laughs> something that can really do some damage. We're gonna get a picture of this and let him go. But man, jigging docks with a spoon, that's a nice walleye like this. That's a heck of a day. Check this out. Let's get a picture. That's awesome. I didn't know you had a fly fisherman net. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, it's Grant Rankin. We're out here on Tib Rock Lake. We're gonna wrap up the day. Been a tough bite. Spoon bite wasn't doing like how I wanted to do. Um, they weren't. Couldn't find any offshore. No, none schooling up. But um, caught a couple flipping docks. My favorite thing to do. Yeah, I caught them on points too. A little jig and rage minute scrub. Um, Hot, 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 hot. The only thing I can say is go deep in the summer. Look for points, look for the thermocline where the water gets cooler. Um, those fish should be hanging around there, but um, we're gonna wrap up the day, call it good, head back and get some burgers. And I'm Grant Rankin, and I, I suck at fishing. Hey guys. Uh, Electronics didn't really mean much today. Uh, as Grant was saying, it's been a tough day, you know, uh, and that happens in fishing sometimes. And here, that's good fish, you know. We're not just going to cut the episode just because it was a tough day of fishing. Because guess what? Tough days of fishing happen to everyone, and uh, doesn't change the fact that Grant and I both love to fish. We'll still come out here and fish anytime. And I uh, hope you guys had a good time watching the episode. I hope you learned a few things. Hope you had a few laughs. Um, make sure you check out our website. That's a goodfish.com. All our episodes, little short videos, clips, all that's on there. Uh, we're going to go put this on the trailer. And that's a good fish!